Welcome back to the channel. So you are choosing between a BMW i4 and a Tesla Model 3, two of the best electric vehicles in the world right now. Hey, life for you is good. It's a difficult decision though. We are here to solve that and to make it easy and tell you which one you should buy. Welcome to the channel. My name is Martin Lee. If you like what we do here, hit subscribe and the bell icon somewhere down here so you never miss a show. All right, let's run the basics here. You can get your Tesla Model 3 in three flavors. What used to be called SR Plus, Standard Range Plus, uh, or just Tesla Model 3. Uh, that is your entry level model. Then long range, then performance. With the BMW, you get two options. There's the entry level E-Drive 40 and the rather spicy M50. But let's go back to basics for a second because these two cars were conceived in very different ways. We want to talk about platforms. Now, Tesla are EV manufacturers through and through. It's all they make. But BMW are into combustion engines in still a really big way. And so Tesla had no compromises to make when they designed their cars. They got on with building the best EV they could. BMW have a choice and still do about how they design their EVs. Indeed, what factories and how they make them within those factories. So do they go for a ground up EV like a BMW i3 or make what is a compromised car, a compromised platform where you can, as it's coming down the production line, either stick in an electric motor or a big combustion engine. They went for the latter. That's their theory about how to navigate this in betweeny bit from combustion to electric. Now, that's not to say that you can't make a great EV if it's not ground up. The likes of the Hyundai Kona and the Kia e Nero prove otherwise really efficient. But in general, you get to do so much more with the car if it's on a dedicated platform. Let's talk about styling before we move to the good stuff like power and range. The first thing to say is that even from the design stage, there's a cultural gap between these two manufacturers. There's a difference in approach to styling, and this affects things like the fabric choice, the cabin layout, and you might prefer one over the other. It doesn't necessarily mean one is wrong. They're just quite different design philosophies and catering for different tastes. On the outside, the i4 will be very familiar to any BMW fan that likes a 4 Series, and it's almost indistinguishable from the petrol-burning version of that. To the untrained eye, at least, the M50 gets a few design tweaks here and there, and it makes it more distinctively German for the fast coupe with more aggressive styling. On the other hand, the Tesla looks more like it was born in a wind tunnel. It's far more simple. It's cleaner as well. The front end starts lower and rises gradually. Unless you know to look out for the wheels and a small spoiler at the back, it's hard to even know what version of the Model 3 that you might be looking at. On the inside, it's the BMW finish that many of the brand fans will buy this car for. If you just love the BMW way of doing things, maybe you had a few in the past, you'll love the interior. The long curved screen that stretches across the dash I think is a nice touch and in stark contrast to the Model 3 that has that protrusive rectangular screen. But if your design preference is for a big iPad on the dashboard, well hey, that's what you're going to get. A lack of buttons, a futuristic and minimalist feel where really your attention is focused on one thing and one thing only, and that's the big screen. The BMW is more traditional and does nothing to upset that sense of familiarity that many people want. The materials are much more plush, more soft leathers to choose from as well. The dimensions aren't exactly the most glamorous topic when we're doing a car comparison, but it's important to mention because it may well be the deciding factor for some people. Both are low and sleek. In fact, they're pretty much identical in terms of length, width and height. Although to look at it, the BMW's front and back ends seem a little higher. On the inside, the Model 3 feels that bit area thanks to that huge glass roof that sweeps all the way back to the rear of the vehicle and the benefits of building an EV on a bespoke platform just begin to show themselves now. There's more space inside the Model 3 for adults. And the lack of a transmission tunnel means the center passenger won't be in agony after a few hours of driving. But you get a lot more space in that central area. The extra bit of space continues in the Model 3. It has 
a big frunk, a generous area in the rear as well. And some people criticize the Model 3 for the size of its opening, but it's still a very good space for a car of this footprint. Let's move on to batteries, range and charging right now. And we'll start with the batteries. What goes into both of these cars? Well, let's look at Tesla first. As talking batteries here gets a little complicated, let's explain. You see, Tesla don't officially release the battery sizes. So we have to extrapolate what they are. Sometimes there's a sticker you can look at if you get underneath the car. Other times we're watching YouTube reviewers who do range tests and maybe have some data capabilities that they've plugged into the car to really work out exactly what's inside it. They don't go through typical model year cycles either. So all of a sudden the car might come off a boat for Tesla having been designed in a different factory and produced there and all of a sudden there are some different improvements that we need to notice. One of those is switching some of the Model 3 cars to the LFP chemistry, lithium iron phosphate. It's cobalt free, it's cheaper, it doesn't have such high power density, but that's okay with a car that you don't really want to be doing the traffic light Grand Prix with. Entry level Model 3 with a 57.5 kilowatt hour battery, good for 200 miles. Equally, I've seen some reviews lately of people in the LFP Model 3s saying, hey, I got 62 kilowatt hours out of it. So again, with Tesla, they don't really advertise those top line specs. Let's put the E-Drive 40 up against the long range Model 3. The BMW has a usable battery of 80.7 kilowatt hours compared to Model 3 that is about 75 kilowatt hours. So that's a small win for the BMW in size, but does it get you more range? No. The WLTP test cycle favors the Tesla. And we reckon in the real world, there's very little difference. Although the legendary Tesla efficiency can shine through at higher speeds. We think both these cars would be good for 300 miles in the real world. Hey, less in winter, elevation, etc., And more in the summer and around town. But what about if you want a little speed and to have uh, a decision to make between the M50 and the Model 3 Performance. Well, both cars are still coming with the same battery packs as they always did, and both the official ranges and our real-world estimations reckon the Tesla takes it by a teeny-weeny margin. It looks like the Tesla is the more efficient car as it gets more out of its battery pack, but that's not hugely surprising considering the BMW is a bit of a chunky boy, weighing 200 kilograms more than its rival here. So what happens when you want to charge them back up? It's safe to say, hey, both are really good. Let's start with AC charging, typically at home or out and about, often for free as well. Both cars will take 11 kilowatts. On the DC side, it's good as well. Even the entry level Model 3 will hit speeds of 175 kilowatts on a good day on DC. As for the BMW, both, uh, both variants peak at 200 kilowatts. Both the long range and performance variants of the Model 3 peak at 210 kilowatts. So it's as good as a draw here again, but we're going to give the win to Tesla. As you get just a little more range out of the energy that you put back into its battery, you also get that access to the wonderful supercharger network. And now onto the good stuff, the performance of both of these cars. So let's get the entry level Model 3 out of the way. It has a very respectable 239 kilowatts of power, 0 to 62 miles an hour, 6.1 seconds. Let's put the E-Drive 40 up against the Model 3 long range with the BMW carrying an extra 200 kilograms or so. It needs more power to beat the Tesla. With 250 kilowatts of motor power, uh, the BMW gets you to 62 miles an hour, 0 to 100 kilometers in 5.0 seven seconds so it's faster than an entry-level model 3 but it gets well beaten off the line by the long-range Tesla 4.4 seconds to do the same distance now let's have a proper look at the i4 m50 and model 3 performance both cars have all-wheel drive so there's no problem with getting traction off the line BMW has 400 kilowatts of motor power in terms of power the Tesla just pips it with 413 but loses out on torque so what does it all mean when you plant the accelerator well the m50 will do the dash in 3.9 seconds to 62 miles an hour compared to the model 3 performance it's blistering. It's 3.3 seconds. But also worth noting, 
The German manufacturers have a bit of a reputation for under-promising and over-delivering at times. And also with Tesla's performance cars, they also start to include the rollout time, or rather not include that bit of the time, as many car makers do, by the way. But Tesla often give different times for their different models, but some have rollouts, some don't, that first bit of when the car starts to move. It's an industry practice, but it'll be good for them to apply it to all their cars or none of their cars. So we think the 0 to 62 mile an hour and quarter mile times of these two cars Again, so close to being identical. The Tesla will likely jump off the line a smidge faster, but the greater torque may see the BMW a little bit stronger. So what separates these two cars and why buy one from the other? In terms of pure numbers, the Tesla does pip it. It's fractionally faster, with more range, and that legendary Tesla efficiency. Better charging, more internal space, but as we all know, it's not always a game of numbers when you go to buy a car and one this expensive it's all about sometimes the emotion and how does it make you feel and what gets you here. And for many people, the feel of the cabin inside the BMW, heck, even the badge on the front means something for a lot of people. That and the sense of familiarity and being in a premium German brand. For others, it's the tech superiority of Tesla. It's the user interface. It's the constant software updates. And hey, for many people, it's being part of that community as well. And for me the supercharging network. It's unlikely that the purse strings will sway buyers either way. Depending on where you live and what type of incentives are available, these cars largely match up on price, even if there is a few thousand between them. Someone who is affording a car like this can probably afford the one they really want. Either way, it's a great problem to have. Arguing over which of these two fantastic cars is a better purchase. So let us know what you think in the comments below. Two exceptional cars featured today. But which one would you go for? I'd love to hear from you down below in the comments. Maybe neither float your boat. Maybe you're after a Kia EV6 GT version. Hey, let me know. Thank you so much for watching again today. If you like the show, give us a thumbs up. It'll tell us to make more like this. And I'll see you on the next one.